So I just had a code come up on my truck. I have a 2001 Dodge Durango with a 5.9 liter. Out of a 1391 uh, loss of cam or crank sensor. I had this pop up a couple times before. And not really sure what's creating it. Usually you'd think it's the cam or the crank sensor. I placed both of those. Um, so, but this, I got this new ZR13 Zurich code reader from Harbor Freight. So I want to see what it says about it. And it has a uh, severity code, two of three. Uh, it says repair immediately if drivability issues are present and there's not. Uh, threat to essential system components if not repaired as soon as possible. Cam chest sensor is not installed properly. Or engine valve timing is not within specifications. So the cam chest sensor actually is in the distributor. It's underneath the rotor. You take it apart and there's a flat plate there that just uh, senses the uh, distributor rotor as it's turning. And that's, so that tells you the cam timing. But I think it's just an intermittent thing. kind of comes and goes. I replaced the sensor once. So I'm not going to do that again. And also the crankshaft position sensor. I replaced that as well. And that's behind the right um, head. Um, on top of the bell housing for the transmission. Well, that is a real pain to replace, by the way. So a sensor relearn with the scan tool. That's what it says to do. Tone wheel or pulse ring is damaged. Huh. So a sensor relearn. Okay, this is just my live data. Hmm. So what I can do, I can re erase codes. I'll do that here. Uh, let's go to the menu see what else we got. So to reset the codes, basically there's this uh, erase key here. Press that. And so now it's erasing the trouble codes. Um, I didn't see any other way to, to look at the crank sensor, but this erased the codes. I'll do auto link to see if it's still there. So now I got a bunch of red um, monitor statuses because it has to jump through, uh, do certain things to clear those codes. Those aren't codes, those are just uh, monitors uh, for like the oxygen sensor and the catalytic converter. And, uh, different things like that, evaporator system. So it actually has to go through and perform those functions. But the main thing I was looking to do is this, there's no uh, powertrain codes anymore. Okay, so we'll start it up and see if uh, any codes reappear. They shouldn't. Those IM monitors, they'll reset themselves as the engine cycles through the different tests to clear the codes. So, at this point, I don't see any codes coming up. Like I said, this is a reoccurring thing I had happen in this vehicle. And, yeah, so now the codes are gone and it's not reappearing. So I'm not really sure what's causing it. Um, it was really cold this morning when I started it. Perhaps that had something to do with it. I don't know. It hasn't reoccurred in a while. It's been a few weeks anyways. So I'm not going to worry about it, I guess. Um, the Zurich uh, ZR13, I put a, a 
documentary on YouTube about this before and I just wanted to show you how it works with the trouble codes pretty easy I like the way it actually tells you what's wrong and it actually had a uh, level of malfunction I mean if it was causing the engine to run roughly um, it could have some real problems there I guess but it's not so it's intermittent it kind of comes and goes in my case um, the live data key I brought this up before just to show you this again And this is useful to look at your sensors, the sensors that are feeding data to the computer. Um, you can see what's going on with it. Temperature, short-term fuel trim, long-term fuel trim. Uh, those two together, um, if you add them together, it should be around zero. And it looks like it was pretty close. As long as it's less than 10%, it's probably good. And there's your... Uh, mass air sensor, RPM, speed, advance. See that, make sure it's not jumping around too much. We'll move some, of course. Throttle position sensor. This is your upstream oil, um, oxygen sensor, voltage. And that fluctuates based on your fuel trim. Oh, and you can also map it out or chart it, graph it, just press enter key, and you can see what it's doing. And that's just a matter of the um, oxygen levels changing as the fuel trim is adjusted back and forth. Your short fuel trim is right here. You can see those voltages change. Again, that's affecting the duration of the um, fuel injectors. That changes up and down, so then your oxygen sensor is picking that up. Um, your second oxygen sensor, that's a matter uh, Look, making sure your cat is operating properly. Um, that second short-term fuel trim, that's not used, so that doesn't mean anything. When I first started this up, I thought it was something was broken because it was maxed out, it looked like, but uh, that, that's not used. It only has one short-term fuel trim. And that's it for that. Um, so you can graph things out, and the other thing you can do, you can record... Hit live data again. Can record live data. Um, you can record it by uh, code. So if you have a code that goes off, then it can start recording from that point and kind of grab all your freeze frame data and everything. That's pretty cool. And or you can just bring it up manually. I record everything and as I said previously this uh, records up to a hundred percent not exactly sure what how much time that is um, there's one percent <laughs> so it'll take a while to go all the way through this um, you know probably I don't know ten minutes maybe of recorded data so it's really handy if you had a intermittent code kind of coming and going you could set it to just plug it in drive the car and then it would actually start recording the moment it gets a trouble code so you could pick that up and look at all the live data to see if the sensors are bad or you can just record it like I just did manually and when you play it back I'll let it go to like 10% when you play it back it looks just like live data it's just recorded live data, right? Okay, 
finish 10%. Like I said, I can go up to 100 so you can get an idea how much time it will take. A few minutes, probably. So, you want to look at it? Yeah. So, you, frame by frame, um, it's basically every percent it records a frame. Or you can just continuous playback. And this is the recording that it just did. So you can see what's going on with it, you know. See if there's a sensor that's gone out. Pretty handy. I like it a lot. Um, the recording of the live data, a lot of times what causes codes to occur is sensors going bad. Oxygen sensors and things like that. So um, you can actually tell what's going on with that. Um, one other thing. I mentioned the fuel trim should be around zero. If it was more than like 10%, like right here, you'd see if you add them together, it's, well, there's zero, there's plus two. It's it's pretty close, it's fluctuating around zero. But if it was more than 10%, um, that would tell you possibly, well, it's it has to make too much adjustments to the fuel trim. And probable cause of that might be um, like a vacuum leak, like if it was uh, indicating lean at the oxygen sensor, then it would add more fuel. Um, so that percentage would go up quite a bit. And but if you gave it some uh, accelerator, gave it some throttle, and then that number, the short-term fuel trim, would come back down because it doesn't. The, the vacuum leak wouldn't have as much effect as it would at idle because there's more air going through the engine. Um, that would indicate you got a vacuum leak. Uh, could be a like a faulty fuel injector, like a dirty fuel injector. It's not squirting fuel like it should, or fuel pressure is low, or something like that. So the fuel trim is kind of handy to tell you what the computer is actually doing to adjust the fuel, and that could be an indicator of something else going wrong. Let's go to live data. Um, just had one more thought I wanted to pass on. So I erased the codes and the code did not reappear. And I got the IM monitor statuses for the cat, for the uh, VAP system, the oxygen sensor, stuff like that. And those will just work their way out as the vehicle is driven for a couple days. It'll do the tests and those should be green. They were before when I started, so it should be all right. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is this vehicle has like 200,000 miles, so the valve timing being off might be an indicator that the, 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 the timing chain is stretched. Um, it was cold this morning when it started up, and that would probably stress it a little bit more than usual. So it kind of makes sense to me. Usually you should uh, put a new timing chain on, I don't know, probably 100,000 miles or so. It says 200,000 miles on the vehicle, so it's probably overdue for a time of change. I'm um, not sure I want to do that. I'll probably just get rid of the vehicle sometime soon anyways, but other than that, it's running all right. It shows that code every once in a while. Um, but it wasn't the actual camshaft sensor or the crank sensor, as I originally thought, because um, I replaced all those and it's still throwing a code. But it's probably, I would say, the next thing to check would be the, the timing chain. Um, anyways, we'll see you later. Bye.